Ambarisha. Ambarisha was an emperor of seven continents. He was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu and had dedicated every act of his as a worship of the Lord. He had performed many sacrifices and was ruling the empire as a perfect jnani, considering the whole country as the property of the Lord and himself as his appointed trustee. He lived a life of tranquility, considered gold and mud as equal. At every movement of his body, he would repeat the Lord's name. He had completely merged his mind in God. He had dissolved the attachment for his wife, children, friends, house, property and kingdom. He was living in complete isolation. On account of his great devotion, the Lord had kept with him his Sudarshana Chakra to protect him against all dangers. Ambarisha was observing an austerity called Dvadashi Vrata, that is for a full one year, to fast every fortnight on the 10th and 11th days and break the fast on the morning of the 12th day, Dvadashi, by taking the dedicated food as prasada, when the special worship of the Lord was complete. On completing the Vrata, at the end of the year, he fasted for three days continuously. And on the Dwadashi day, he bathed in the river Kalindi, worshipped the Lord Krishna and then gave as gifts to learned Brahmins milk cows in numberless thousands. He fed Brahmins and devotees sumptuously and he was about to break his fast by taking some prasada. At that moment, sage Durvasa arrived as a guest. The king received him with due respect and requested him to take his food in his house. The sage agreed and went to the river for a bath, sat down there for meditation. He did not turn up for breakfast. The king, having fasted for three days, had to take his food before the first quarter of the day had passed. The time was up. The sage did not make his return. The king called the learned and wise and explained to them the critical position and asked them, The Dwadashi time is passing away. The sage does not return from the river. If food is not taken within the time, the austerity ends in failure. What is to be done? The learned Brahmins consulted between themselves and advised the king to sip some water as prasada and then wait for the sage. It would not amount to taking food, yet forms a way of having some prasada. The king would be absolved of all omissions and commissions. Accordingly, the king sipped three spoons of water, repeating the names of the Lord. In the river, the sage completed his meditation and remembered the king's feast. He saw through intuition what the king had done meanwhile and concluded that the king had finished his breakfast without him. He felt that he was dishonored and became angry. He wanted to teach a lesson to the king. He created an apparition like a discus from a tuft of his hair and directed it to attack the king. Meanwhile, Lord Vishnu was watching the behavior of the sage who was always prone to be insolent. He immediately sent a Sudarshana Chakra to punish the sage. The divine Chakra first destroyed the apparition discus and then attacked the sage. The sage got terrified and ran for shelter but the Chakra followed him. The sage beseeched Brahma but Brahma pleaded his inability to counteract the Vishnu Chakra. The sage went to Kailash. Lord Siva too pleaded inability. The sage ran to Vaikuntha itself and fell at the feet of Lord Vishnu. The Lord told him that he was helpless. He was only a tool in the hands of his devotees. I am bound by the cords of love by my devotees. I run after them in all dangers. I protect them. They are in me. I am in them. A devo devotee robs me completely by his love. I feel helpless. He deserts his wife, children, house, property and everything and looks to me as the only abode. They live in my heart. I live in their hearts. A devotee attains liberation through knowledge and devotion. My Sudarshana Chakra always protects them. 
No harm can come to them. I cannot interfere with it. You would do well to go and apologize to the king Ambarisha himself and he will be able to do good to you. The sage returned disheartened and fell at the feet of the king Ambarisha and caught hold of them. The king felt it as a great pain and immediately began to praise the chakra, requested it to forgive the foolish sage and prayed that no harm might befall him. He prostrated before the chakra. The chakra became cool and returned to its abode. The sage expressed his gratitude to the king for saving him from the Vishnu chakra, blessed him as best as he could. He received the sweet food offered by the king and went away praising the greatness of the devotee of Lord Vishnu, having been convinced that there was no difference between the Lord and his devotees. Both are one. The king had his breakfast after the sage had left. He came to the conclusion that all the play of the chakra coming and returning back was only the leela of the Lord, himself being only an instrument in that play. He remembered the great truth. Sarvadharman prati, uh, parityajya mamekam sharanam vraja aham tva sarva uh, papebhyo mokshayishyami ma sucha.